Here are a few fun things we did after we got back to Tokyo from Okinawa. Sorry about the portrait orientation, since we took most of the videos with our phones. We stayed again at the Godzilla Hotel, and had a chance to take some photos of the big Godzilla head and body on the 8th floor. Show this. You can see the Godzilla head quite far away down the main street from the hotel. We saw this chocolate eclair at Lawson's. It doesn't look too appetizing. We got a cup with ice, ice. cafe milk. Okay. Switch it to English, please. This is Melita. Ice. Cafe Mocha, a third one down. Oh. So it's basically an expensive super automatic. Because there's powders in it. Cocoa. There's the matcha one on the side. Pretty cool. Yeah, we'll try it in matcha. We got a Cafe Mocha from Lawson in the morning and was impressed with the machine there. It has multiple languages, the coffee is freshly ground, and the cocoa powder is actually in the dispenser beside the beans. We went to a highly recommended cat cafe, and it's super popular, so we had to book beforehand. We booked the earliest time slot so there would be fewer customers. The decor was very nice, and it felt like we were in an anime world. There were also a lot of cats, but they all seemed to be quite sluggish, and some of them we could tell were old timers and wouldn't approach anyone unless they had food. You can, of course, purchase extra food from the restaurant to feed them. This really diminished the experience though, as we wanted to see playful, interactive cats doing their thing. Not greedy ones just standing there waiting for food. Between this cat cafe and the other random one we went to in the past, the other one was actually much better. The decor there was nowhere near as good as this place, but the cats were much more playful and interactive. I'll put a link to both locations below if you're interested. We really liked the Japanese style shaved ice, so we went to a place called Kuria Peace, which is in Kichijoji, and it was recommended in a Netflix Japanese drama that we watched called Kentaro, the Sweet Tooth Salaryman. The store is tiny, with about, I think, 10 seats inside. When we got there, there was already a lineup outside, and that actually wasn't the full lineup. You had to fill in the paper pad outside the store with the time slot that is still open and come back around that time to get your spot. We didn't want to go back after a few hours, so we had two takeout and ate it right there. We also had the best luck of going to the store when the weather was pretty cold and windy. So let's just say it wasn't the optimal day to have shaved ice. We ordered a strawberry and cream and a salted caramel flavored shaved ice. Both were very good and the flavor combos worked well. Though we're not sure if it's good enough for us to purposely come back here to have it though. We popped by Tokyo Skytree to do some shopping. Mainly so I could go to the Strict G store which sells exclusive Gundam stuff. I was tempted with quite a lot of items, but they were pretty expensive, so I resisted and only ended up getting one hat. Moto food items are a very popular thing in Japan, and this store called Ganso Sample sells both finished food items as well as kits that you can build and paint yourself. The food is really well made and painted, and could pass for the real thing. It's those display food items you sometimes see in the display windows of restaurants, but this store has so many food varieties. My favorites were some of the sushi and ramen bowls. 
The ramen bowls were too big for us to display at home, so we got a few sushi magnets. We booked tickets to Team Lab Planets, which according to their own site, is considered a museum. It is definitely not the traditional museum. We can only describe it as a full sensory experience. We were really excited since we saw some videos about the different Team Lab installations, and it did not disappoint. I won't spoil the experience by showing too many clips, but if you have a chance to go to Japan, this is definitely something we recommend. We're absolutely going to go to the other Team Lab places next time we go to Tokyo. We wanted to have another conveyor belt sushi before we left, and there was one super close to our hotel, so we gave it a shot. Not much flavor. Not much flavor. No, oh, not much fiber. Sorry. Let's have the flavor. Not bad. Not, not bad. Not very strong, man. Not bad. Okay. Good. The price is a little bit more expensive than the chain stores in Okinawa, but still very reasonable, starting around 120 yen a plate. Food was good, and I would say it's actually slightly better than the big chain stores. And that's it for our Japan vlog for the first half of 2019. We really enjoyed ourselves in Japan and got to experience the sun and beaches of Okinawa as well as great food in Tokyo. The most memorable part for me was the food. The Michelin star sushi course, the numerous Wagyu grilled beef restaurants. They were all so good, but the one that wins for me is Sushi Fukumoto. When we go back to Tokyo in November, we're definitely thinking about going again. Oh, and Susie actually won something from the UFO claw machines. 